Fam.news. How do you fill your stores with customers, motivate your team, and ring up more sales? Isn't that what we all want, right? Foot traffic, get them in the door, but then you got to close them. Bob Fibs is back, the retail doctor himself, plus a mattress buying horror story. You don't want to miss it. The fan podcast begins right now. 1894, Max Englander hand-built the first Englander mattress. Today, Englander mattresses are still bench-made right here in the USA. Proven materials, expertly layered, and every stitch triple-checked. All for you. Englander, better sleep by design. Hey, are you a mattress retailer looking to supercharge your business? Introducing Podium, your secret weapon. I use it, I'm a huge fan of it. And with Podium's AI-powered lead conversion, you can engage with customers in seconds via text, making it feel like they're talking to a friend. But hey, that's just the beginning. Podium offers texting, payments, reviews, website chat, and more all in one place. You've gotta be the most responsive retailer to help customers solve those sleep problems in the moment. Harness the power of Podium today and start growing your business. Visit Podium.com right now to learn more. Welcome to the FAM Podcast with Mark Kinsley. This is where the best in the betting business get even better. Bob Fibbs, welcome back to the show. How are you? Now, you got a smile on your face, which means the horror story in buying a mattress might be over. Am I right? It's terrible. I keep hearing you say the horror story, and I'm like, do I have a horror story? Oh, the horror story. That's right. <laughs> it, it actually does, but it took two years for the worst experience I've had in buying anything in my life, and it was a mattress. Oh, that's so painful to hear. It's not tires. It's not tire chains. It's not a dishwasher. It's a mattress. It's one that you think would be the easiest fixes in the world. And uh, I will try to make this short for your audience. Don't worry, because you know this is this. You're in a safe space here. Because lots there of is people. A lesson for all of you listening as well. And a lot of lessons in it. Yes. So. Uh, I met this guy, and he was a nice enough guy. He was the owner of this company in uh, California, and he had a mattress uh, retail store. And I understood that this brand was one of the best in the world. Came out of it's. Uh, I don't know if I can say the name, but Vice Spring. They're out of the UK. Storied brand, been around forever. All natural. A lot of things that makes it great and got this bed and within mm, three weeks it started to have the coffin syndrome right like you'd start you'd feel like you're going down and then there was like this bridge in the middle of the bed between the two of us and so i said a thing and i said hey this uh, seems odd is this normal yes and no you should just keep flip you should just flip the mattress every two weeks i'm like uh, okay so did that for four months. This isn't working. It's getting worse. It's actually down. And uh, so I get no response from the retailer. So now I move off to the customer service. And I send them an email. And, oh, we'll, we'll, we'll follow up. They follow up the retailer. Nothing. This goes on for another year. Finally, after a year, they're willing to do a string test. And the guy comes in and he, he, he looks at it and he's like, oh yeah, this failed. Yeah, this is terrible. I don't know. How do you possibly sleep? I go, I know I'm taking like sleeping aids to try to be able to sleep at night. It sucks. It's affecting my mood, all of it, but I'm not about to give in because I'm being told from friends, throw it out and get another one. This thing is a king size mattress, by the way. So it's heavy as lead to, to flip over, etc. Go back to the retailer. Uh, quiet again, quiet. I'm actually speaking not far from this retailer's uh, uh, shop. And I walk in and I say my name and it's the retailer's uh, part of their family. And you know who I am? Oh yes, we're working on your behalf. They changed all of their rules for why they would take things back. And I was like, oh, so I walk out. I sent an email off to customers. Did that change? Nothing has changed in 11 years. I go through and I 
now hire a lawyer. And for about 1100 bucks, I have them write the letter and send the demand for service. Not a word. Send it also to the, to the brand in the UK. Not a word. And I'm just livid. And I was like, well, just wait till I do a speech about mattresses, dude. This is going to be, I'll have pictures. It'll be great. And uh, so it's now January of 2023. And I get this email. I think it's Trustpilot sends me an email saying, would you review this mattress brand? And I was like, would I? So I go through, but it's kind of short, right? So it's only like, what, 150, 200 characters, and I rail on this. The next day I get this call, and on my phone it says it's coming in from the UK. And I was like, well, that's odd, and I answer it. Ends up being the CEO of the company. He goes, I just read your review and subsequently your file. How can I make this right? You can give me a new bed. And he's like, I don't care what bed you want. I'll get you a new bed. I am embarrassed. Of course, I don't have the British accent. And uh, he goes, I'll national, national sales manager contact you. Great. Guy calls within half hour. Tells me like, oh, we're sorry. I go, yeah, I reached out to you on LinkedIn. I said, you could stop this. Do you remember that? I asked you. And he goes, oh, yeah, I didn't think you were serious. I had another bed for you. I was like, whatever. Two months later, the bed arrived. It's a great bed. And it was a step up, no two ways about it. I'm sure, you know, it was, it's, it's everything, everything I would want in a bed. It's fabulous. I look forward to it. I used to look forward to going out on the road and having a better bed like at Marriott or Weston. And I look forward to coming home and be on it. All that to say is none of what I thought ever would have, would, would have made a difference worked. And the one thing I pretty much threw off as this isn't going to mean squat was the one little moment that that one guy happened to see it. And so can you imagine the number of people I've told this story to using not hiding names, by the way, not uh, the number of people I talk about in the industry and this person is still in business and uh, has never once apologized or anything else. So the message to all of you out there is remember a customer when we feel like we have been wronged um, we don't have any, we are hopeless. We are, we are helpless to fight you. And in my case, I couldn't even go after my credit card company because the credit card company says that's too long ago. You waited too long to, to do it. Yet, the, the owner knew exactly what was going on at any moment could have made the difference. Any moment. And so if you're listening to this or watching this, just imagine you know, those uh, reviews on your site, yeah, you probably did great on the people that liked you, but what about the people that didn't and how many people they might say, um, I would never use them again? Because the market's not that big. You're not the only one out there anymore. And all you've got is your reputation. I can get your product anywhere, online, in a store, competitor, another state, you name it. But if I'm going to choose you, that means I do choose you as a person. And when you miss that trust, um, you, have, you have blown all of it because that's the only way you're going to build your business. And so I hope all of you never do that for your crew. If something, you know, maybe that'd be a great lesson. Another thing, Mark, call all the people that ever had a problem with you in the last year. If you're the owner, it, it's not going to hurt. I'd rather hear it like your guy was rude to me. He stalked me. He, whatever he did, I don't know, whatever it's going to be. Just try to make a point that you're compassionate and you want to earn their business. You can't give them 500 bucks to be nice to you, just to be heard. Just be heard. I know. And your like, opportunity to be heard, strangely enough, was whenever that magical email came through and you had the opportunity to leave a review about your experience. So think about that as a business owner, uh, the, the power of the review. Other people are going to see that. That CEO of Vicepring knew that other people were going to see that review at some point, and he wanted to make it right. And, and that's the other thing. You know, at the beginning of the show, we talked about we have this horror story, and then we're going to talk about how do you fill your store with customers, motivate your team, et cetera, et cetera. Well, if you're going to fill your, cust your store with customers, it's not going to happen if you're putting out seeds into the universe that get planted that are bad reviews. And, and even build on that, Mark, is he also noticed before he called me 24 hours later, whatever, 
he had gone into the file, like what was going on here and saw the pages of back and forth. And, you know, you could just hear him like, and I'm going through it and I'm going, oh no. <laughs> and it's like, I know you're living my life, dude. So, you know, I think a lot of times the number one thing people always ask me as a retail doctor is how do I attract more customers? And I think the days of cause and effect are done. Yeah, you can run your lost leader special at 99 bucks and yeah, you get a few people in. But quite simply, mattresses don't typically sell for that reason. They're selling because something changed in somebody's life. So how you approach them when they come into your store and how you end up... I went into a... Uh, I guess I shouldn't say names, but I went into a single brand uh, that uses air instead of regular mattresses. And you had a sign-up sheet on a clipboard that you could sign up and wait. And I looked and there were four people ahead of me. And there were only two people in the store. <laughs> I was like, I guess those two people left and they didn't even cross off their name. It was like, are you kidding me? They didn't even greet me. And I just thought, wow, business must be great. Can you imagine having the ability to say, yeah, we're good enough. You don't have to wait. You don't have to, you'll wait for us. I don't think that's out there for many of us. Maybe Starbucks we'd wait. Yeah, we wait for Starbucks. But. Yeah, that line gets backed up pretty far out to the uh, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, exactly. There's all that. <laughs> so, so how is it then, if you don't have the luxury of being a Starbucks or a Chick-fil-A of the world, and you're a durable good. It's an infrequent purchase. Like you said, something has probably changed in their lives. I always talk about, you know, people are typically going through a transition. And when that happens, that, that means there's, there's, uh, there's fear because the, the transition represents uncertainty and what they want is an assurance of an outcome. So with those factors in place and you're talking durable goods, how do you coach people these days on filling your store with customers? Get the crap off your front windows to begin with. I can't tell you how many stores cover their windows with banners and backgrounds. And here's the small thing that most people don't realize. People attract people. Nobody wants to be the first into a store. We first off don't know, like, am I the only one here? I imagine women, it's probably another thought, like, you know, am I safe in this environment? Because... It's all the windows are all closed off and there's this one guy sitting over there unhappy behind a chair. Um, so people attract other people. That's number one. Number two, if you're a street side store, uh, maybe your policy is all the employees park in the back. That's great. Unless you're dead, they park in the front because you need to show that people are there. If I had my druthers, I would have a little cafe table out in front with a, an umbrella and it may not work in Arkan in Bentonville where you guys get big storms. So you have to get the industrial ones, but uh, and give them coffee and invite them to sit out front and think about it or whatever. But do something that says it's different here. Put out a red carpet is not a bad idea. I've done that for several of my clients that says welcome right from the moment because your your whole thing to attract people is to make you feel like you matter. And the care with which you invite me in, right? So think of how many mattress stores you've seen, which are in the industrial building. It could be a, a Starbucks here. It could have a Lowe's. It could have um, some kind of a sewing center, right? You've got that, that same idea. So you put some giant planters out front and you put some plants in them or uh, like bushes or something to soften it so that it looks like you're going to somebody's home. But we don't do that. Oh, uh, no, that won't work. Okay. I mean, if I had my way, I'd have seasonal displays uh, the whole time. I, I saw there was a company in Texas, a woman two years ago, she took pumpkins and arranged them around her house, like in a kind of this order around the doors and everything. And it was kind of cool. And then all of her friends started asking for it. She's now got, I don't know, several million dollar business around Fort Worth doing that. I would hire that woman and say like, great, I want you every, every season, I want pumpkins. And then the next one, I'm going to want something else. And I would say it's different here, but we, we don't, let's be honest. It's a little hard to make a mattress store look great. I think you make them look crappy, right? They're too dark. You painted the ceilings black. 
You there's no lights. It's just these beds under under fluorescent lights. Like it's all the same. No one's minding it. So you watch kids jumping on them, and then adults going from one to the other, and you're like, it's a zoo in here. I wouldn't want to be here. So thinking about how we make it look like a home, how people attract people, and then that things change on a regular basis rather than you know buy the whatever it is, bunk bed set for $49 and we'll throw in sheets or something like that. You, you forget that's not why we buy it. We buy it because it's going to make us feel better. And so uh, I think that's, uh, that's one of my, my biggest things I think about. And, you know, also just be thinking about online. You know, when you're leading, like every other mattress company, uh, you know, sale this weekend or three days only, and it's in yellow and black yellow and uh yellow and red and you know you got the banner just think about that does that say like high end or does that just say we're desperate for taking anything we want and again your leader your uh listeners are more educated and i think more successful to begin with so um i think you're probably hungry for something different so consider that whatever we did before let's leave that behind and if we understand anything about people and younger generation, they want experiences. And so people put rock climbing walls in, in sporting goods. Like, isn't that great? It's like, do I really want to go and climb a wall when I'm trying to buy basketball shoes? I doubt it. But it gives you a distraction, right? I'm saying let's get rid of the distractions and let's take a look at how do we actually make somebody feel like they're invited into the showroom and then our online does the same thing. Simple things, it might sound simple, but to actually commit to it and then have your crew understand that, you know, moving everything around once every three months is a great idea. I hate that, Bob. I can't find anything. I know, that's the point. Because you get, you get stuck in your little track. You go to the same three beds and you say, this is the best, when it may not be the best. But it's the best in your mind because you don't sell the whole line. You sell what's easy. And that's the key, right? Everybody's got something they could reach for that should always be you know can you i mean can you imagine buying a hundred thousand dollar bed i can't imagine it but i probably would put one in my store just so everything else seemed like a great buy and i would show every single person a hundred thousand because the guy that walks in in his flip-flops and beat up jeans and a and a gray hoodie it could be the next mark zuckerberg but we don't know people don't dress to go shopping so why not have the biggest want and bring it into your store tour and let people feel like, wow, what would it be like to have that? Just some of my off the cuff ideas. Talk to us about some retail. It could be in the furniture, mattress industry, or completely outside that you've worked <clears throat> with who are like, okay, you're right, Bob. Like we need to think about it differently. People are connecting with people. People attract people. We need to have something arresting in the story. We need to make it feel comfortable in some way, make it feel like a home. What are some of the companies out there that have made that shift? And you're like, yes, it worked. You, you executed on it. Because I think the, the concept of it is one thing, but the execution, a lot of people fail in that or they fumble. One of the, one of the things we're seeing in, uh, in certain stores, certainly not a furniture store per se, because you already have it, is to actually have sitting areas for people to actually sit down, not sit on the beds. They'll actually have a little comfort, comfortable area again even having a curing uh, or something like that to give somebody uh, so time to think about it, to be able to, uh, to rest, to not be so exposed. Um, I, I doubt your listeners are going to uh, National Retail Federation's uh, big event in New York, but if you do, or you go to any trade show or go to Manhattan, you've got to go visit the new Tiffany's. And the new Tiffany's is fascinating because They've got a beautiful, it's an amazing store with digital, all sorts of beautiful things. But one of the most interesting is, is how they have these walls that the wall kind of faces, the middle is a racetrack of display uh, areas, but these little walls, and then behind it is a little desk with two, looks like a little living room almost. And that's where the consultants take you from the middle where everything is to have a private area. And I just think it's so interesting that they would do that. Because how many jewelry stores have thought about what would it feel like to be that exposed out there dis discussing all of it? I mean, people are talking about, this. in your case, what are we talking about in mattresses? My husband and I, 
my girlfriend and I, I sleep with my kid, whatever. I mean, how many people are going to open up and just be honest with you? My kid wets the bed and she, and she sleeps with us sometimes. What do I do about that? I would rather they told me everything and me not have all the answers than to pretend everything is great. I want to hear about it. You know, we bought, tell me, you know, before you, if I was, so another way you could attract me is, uh, let's say I called your business on the phone and you interviewed me before I got there. So one thing that will be really great before you come down, Bob, is, uh, you know, we could see you, we, we could see you this afternoon, anytime, but uh, peel back your mattress and look and see what that tag is. Take a picture of it for me so I know what it is. And if you know the type of um, bed it is, the, the queen or the king or whatever it's going to be, and if you have any room to make it a little bit bigger, um, that might be an idea too. Also, if you have uh, nightstands or if you have any storage under it, suddenly you've said, it's different here. And to me, that's what we're missing in retail. It's just the same circus five miles away, right? It's like we've got all of our big banners and we've got all the things that the brands gave us 10 years ago and they're yellowing and, you know, we didn't take them down because, well, that's still true. That's still kind of good. Instead of really thinking, what if it was, the word I'm using for 2024 for retailers, what if it was fresh? What if it felt fresh when I walked in there? That's kind of talking about with the pumpkins and some other things. It felt really different than I would probably beat a path to. And more importantly, if I didn't shop, if I didn't buy from you, when I walked out, I would definitely feel the difference when I went to the other guys. And let me give you a little hack here. There are designers out there that can help you make it feel fresh. And those designers probably have clients that need mattresses. So there's probably some sort of deal you could work out. You know, I, I thought of something. This is kind of off the beaten path, but... Do you know how you can tell if it's a cop walking into a bar undercover versus just a regular person? I imagine you're going to tell me, so I do <laughs> not know that answer. Um, what is it, Mark? So you can tell if it's a cop walking into a bar because they immediately walk through the door and they scan the room. Uh, the regular person walks into the bar, keeps shoegazing, sits down at the bar stool, and only then do they observe the room. And the reason I thought of that is because I like what you were saying about finding a space or a place where you can sit down and you can get comfortable. Because when somebody walks into the bar that is the mattress store, they're just looking at, you know, even, they just want to like get to something. You know, they're not the cop walking in being like, yep, I know I'm going to look at everything. I'm going to drink it in because if there's any trouble, I'm going to be the one that solves it. No, maybe letting them get situated in some area of familiarity, like a little living room set, asking a few questions, getting to know them, building rapport like you talk about. And then from that vantage point, they can see the rest of the bar. They can start seeing the other people on the bar stools. They can see all the mattresses. And there's a comfort that grows from that moment of familiarity. Absolutely. You know, the more you have a big screen TV that's showing the game, space room employees aren't sitting there watching it. That's always a danger. But uh, if that's for the guys, then what are you going to do for the women, right? And so just thinking of how does it feel like this would be an upgrade to my, my home space or my bedroom versus replacing a toilet? Because a mattress in a lot of ways, people, it's a toilet. It's like, I need it. I don't really care. I'll get whatever, you know, it's the same job. It's like when I was in the hotel business, my first client, and uh, we doubled the rates within six months. And people said, you know, what am I buying? The whole hotel? I just need a bed. No, you don't. Because if you've ever spent a night at the Marriott Marquis and you're right in the middle of Times Square and you're going to go see a show, it's nice to walk only a block and you're in your bedroom. Oh, and you can get a, a, night, a night drink instead of having to go around four or five different blocks. Nothing is more dismissive than saying it's just a mattress. It's a third of your life. Yeah, Maybe and if more. you believe that, they're going to feel that you believe that. Oh, exactly. But we got to get out of this idea that anyone can do it. It's all price and promotion. Or worse, I hear from you know some salesman, oh, well, they're all the same. Really? A $100,000 mattress is the same as a $200 mattress? I guess in a bold way it is. But your back will tell you differently, right? And I think when I first started working with Park Lane mattresses, they're out of Oregon, if you're listening. And, um, and I got schooled on, you really don't want to lay down on more than three mattresses. The body can't tell more than three. 
And, and I was like, oh, that's a science to mattress selling. Hmm. But how many of us have taken that time to have an employee go through and say, I want you, you know, go into someone else's store, right? Not into your own. Go into Macy's or go into somebody different, right? And now you go through and, and lay on 12 of them and go, great, which, you know, blindfold them maybe. Say, great, tell me which one was the best. Yeah. Why not play a game team. with it? That's where I go back to. Why not, you know, go into your buddies who's also carries it or something or at a trade show or whatever. Do something and say, now imagine if you were a, a customer who was also trying to think about, I've got to get home. The dog's going to pee on the floor. I've got to pick up Johnny after his football game. I've got to go pick up grandma next week. What, what did that boss want in that email, right? Because that's all happening in your customer's mind. But we think it's a logical progression or worse, that you're the magician that's going to make it, right? Because you, you thought of, this is the best one. Mark, this is the best one for you. Really? Why? Um, because I have it. Yeah, but I have no rapport with you. Why would I give a damn what you have? I mean, you might live very differently than I do. So all of that to say, again, is, is that, to me, selling is just a big game. And the more enjoyment we have out of it, the more we feel like, Oh, that really worked. You know, I work at SalesRx with my online training, and it's a long sales cycle for larger retailers. And um, one, uh, we were supposed to start uh, in February, and they, they got on the call right away. He's like, "We're not starting till till April because we're cutting our hours, and uh, but we want to we're moving everybody to full time so that we can have more people, better people on the floor more often." But you probably think I'm stringing you along. I'm like, dude, why would I think you're stringing you along? You're on the call with me. But but there may be people that do need to visit you two or three times. I just think that if your salespeople don't realize that could have been your one shot, dude. And you handing me your little card, I'm Bob, ask for me, we work on commission. Ugh. <laughs> it's like Willie Lomanville. Just, ugh. Please don't do that. Yeah. If they I, come I, back and they don't ask for Bob, right? They come back. Bob worked with them, right? And they come back and now they're talking to Mark. I don't get the right to walk over and go, Mark, that's my sale. I worked with him earlier. Yeah, well, dude, you didn't close him. Sorry. Sucks to be you. Do better. I went to get a piece of carpet the other day. I have hardwood floors in the entire house except my master bedroom closet. And you know, it's, a, it's not a giant piece of carpet. It's just like, what? A little remnant. By, yeah. So I go to the store. <laughs> I go to the store and I walk up and there's this long piece of like wooden flooring leading back to this half moon desk and two people sitting back there. And I walk in, I say, Hey, I called and, uh, they're, they're, they're both sitting there and they go, uh, yeah, uh, David's in the back. He's on the phone right now. He'll be able to help you in a minute. As soon as he's off, he's off the phone and he can help you with the sale. And I'm looking at it, like, what about you two? You're doing nothing. And then it got worse from there. Uh, it, wow. You know, it, it ended up where the, the gal that was giving us the price quote um, was talking about volleyball on the phone that she was coaching that night, but on the company phone. And I was the only customer in the store trying to get a quote. Uh, it, it was really special. And I just thought, what, like, what, what planet have I ended up on? Like, <laughs> this is the experience that I'm getting. And it, it would be so easy to fix those things. So easy. Who's mining the store, right? It's like, uh, you know, one of the oldest tests in retail, go check the bathroom. They don't clean the bathroom. They don't let you use the restroom. It tells you an awful lot about them. And a lot of women do that. Check it out. So it's, I guess that's the thing. If you're, if you're really, uh, you know, you're, you've been doing this a while or you're not making money and it's not as fun, just understand you can change that, right? So just change the way that you're doing your windows. Change the way that your, your whole system is set up. Well, we put the very best at the beginning. Well, great. Well, then move that to the back. It doesn't really matter, does it? Customer doesn't know. She's not coming in and saying this, but it does change your crew's perspective. And yeah, you'll have your reps who are saying, oh, but we need the front. We want the front. It's like, dude, if I sell more wherever it is, aren't you happy? Uh, yeah. So if you're out there and you're saying like, how do I, how do I think about this on a deeper level? How do I professionalize this? I mean, you can always head over to retaildoc.com and you can get in touch with Bob. It's retail doc. And Bob, by the way, I, I mean this, like we don't have any, like, this is just me speaking from me. I've gotten to peek behind the curtain of your retail training program and go through it. 
it's very well done. Thank you. It's very well done. Not, not only in terms of like the content, the presentation, the interactivity along the way to keep people engaged is incredibly well thought through. So kudos to you, big applause, congratulations. Thank you. I know you help a lot of people out there be retail professionals. And whenever you're sitting in a store a long time as a mattress sales associate or a furniture store associate, and that up comes in and you're really excited about it and you feel a little bit desperate, uh, that's some of the stuff that training can help with. That's some of the stuff that training can help with. And you do a great job of serving our industry and beyond. I know like you spoke at Google a while back and like that's that's incredible. I did. Imagine when I sell that tell that story from that retailer someday to a to a betting conference and people are like, Oh, that could have been us. <laughs> right? And that's that's it. So if you listen to that story and you think, Oh, well, that's happened to him, that's crazy, it's like everybody's got a story like that of something they bought like you with the carpet. Everybody's got those stories. And isn't it funny how many details I still remember over two years. Yeah. The funny thing is, I sort of, I remember exactly. Go ahead. Yeah. The funniest thing is too, I went ahead and bought carpet from them because they had the carpet that my wife and I both agreed on. And then the guy, apparently the only guy working in the entire store, the guy that was answering the phones, doing the selling and apparently doing the measuring as well, comes out to my house and measures for the carpet as well. I'm like, does anybody else work here? Um, and by the way, I left out a detail of, I was getting the carpets because I know it's going to look different hanging up on the wall rack than it is down on the floor. So I was putting them down on the floor and I was taking stuff up and down. I probably did a dozen of those and the guy just stood there and watched me the whole time. Didn't help, didn't pick them up. He was just thumbing the carpets going, oh, that's a nice one. That's real nice. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I wear Robert you, you know, some, and, and that's the thing is when it came down to like it be, being a utility purchase, um, I'm going to walk away. And if I have bigger needs, there's no loyalty there for me. I'm not going to go back and, and, and say, oh, these are the people I'm going to use hands down because the rapport wasn't there. The service wasn't there. And I felt like they kind of just got away with something, but it, but it was a need I had. It turned into a very utility purchase. So think about that from your customer's perspective as well. Like, when you walk through the journey of the before, during, and after, are they going to refer? Are they going to recommend? Um, and if they're not, that customer journey needs to be reevaluated. God, it's easy to do. You know, it's not brain surgery. Did you make me feel I mattered or didn't you? You know, it's mm -hmm. one of the things we run into too. So many people say, oh, I had a problem with this mattress. Where'd you buy it from? Did you buy it from us? No, I didn't buy from you. Well, you'll have to go back to the, you know, have to go back to the retailer. Like, why don't you just take a moment and just say, well, what happened? Just give them, here's the thing, big idea, Mark. I think you have to add value if you're going to talk to somebody, right? So either you're going to add value in, you know, whether you buy a mattress from us or not, here's the three things that most impact it is the this and the this and this. Anybody explain that to you? No. Would you like me to? Yeah, I would. Because you're invitational. You're giving me, you're making me a smarter consumer whether they buy from me or you're adding value to me instead of, um, yeah, is your wallet, are you ready? If we could deliver it today, are you ready to buy? Uh, even though you may not say that, if that comes across, I think you just end up again, um, I've increased sales for so many different types of businesses, millions of dollars by double digits, by the simple thing of being brilliant on the basics. Yeah, you've got somebody who loves you. Good for that. Wonderful. I'm glad you do. You know, they buy all their mattress for you. Wonderful. What I care about is that person has never met you before and it's their first time in the store. They're not going to cut Mark slack and say, well, Mark's in the back. You know, you have to wait for him. Why am I waiting for Mark? There's two of you. And maybe that brings it home full circle. If you want to fill your store with customers, you do have to be brilliant on the basics. Talked to a friend of mine who knew the, the first karate, world karate champion from Portugal. And he asked him, what did you do differently? What made you the champion? He said, every day I would go in, bored out of my mind most of the time, but my sensei would make me do very basic punches and kicks every single day, basic stuff over and over and over and over again. It's like we talked about in the past, like getting your reps in but he was brilliant on the basics. And I think that is a great put way to close it out. And if you want to get connected with Bob to help you get brilliant on the basics, head over to real retail doc.com. Uh, I'll put all the links in the show notes and uh, Bob, thank you for being a part of the fam as always. And uh, we'll see you hopefully in the near future. You're back here on the fam podcast. I love it, Mark. Thanks so much.